Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Vocast. I'm your host, Drew. We're going to be reacting to and breaking down Home Freeze arrangement and performance of Mary Did You Know. This is a classic Christmas song, and I have no doubts that Home Free does a good cover of this. And I feel late to the game for reacting to this because it's been out for over a year, and I still have not uh, heard it yet. So, Also, we're going to be trying something new with this recording today. I've seen a lot of people commenting on the amount of times I stop and start in my videos, so I'm going to try and remedy that. I'm going to do something new. I'm going to do a first-time reaction, and I'm going to listen to it all the way through without pausing, without stopping. You're going to hear my honest thoughts, but the music's going to still play. But I'm going to talk a lot less during the first initial reaction. After that, there will be a very brief pause, and then we'll transition into another section where I will do my musical breakdown. So that way we can appease both audiences and we don't upset either audience either. So with that said, we are going to move on to the musical disclaimer. Then we're going to get into the reaction portion of the video. And after that, we'll proceed into the analysis part of the video. Full disclaimer, I'm not a musical genius in any way, shape, or form. I'm simply sharing my musical insight and knowledge with you, so that way you can get a better understanding of the music that makes an appearance on this channel. Now, with that said, let's jump into the first reaction. All right, cool. So, we are set. I've got my piano ready to go. And, uh, let's jump in, folks. Am I recording? Yes, I am. Sweet. So, like I said, this section is going to be just me reacting, and I'm not going to stop it through this first portion, okay? Harmonies, guys. Mary, did you know? Oh, Tim's on the lead. Baby boy would one day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and it's a really cool beatboxing in this. It's very light. You know that your it fits. It fits. It's got a little bit of pick me up with the uh, beatboxing in here. I think I'm hearing an A1 in chest somewhere in the background, guys. There's a cool effect in there. A vibe, guys. I love it. It's a really cool twist.
wow. Mary, did you know? We're going to have to talk about that in the reaction or the breakdown section, that, that bass slide. Harmonies for days, people. so good so there's a, gonna be a lot to talk about in this analysis section but this was really cool so we're gonna start breaking stop we're gonna uh, talk about it in the analysis section but this was really cool so with that said we're gonna move on to the analysis section now that we've done a full run through and we'll go from there Okay, so this begins the analysis portion of the video. So we're going to go back to the beginning, and we're going to evaluate what we're hearing. Obviously, we're not going to stop and start every single piece of the entire song, but I'm going to try to draw your attention to as much of the musical trinkets as I possibly can. So with that said, we're going to jump into the... Uh, at the beginning again, and we're going to start breaking stuff down that we hear. <laughs> Is this in? See? No, A, A. Key of A something. Um, a minor, perhaps? No. Maybe. I'm not 100% sure. So, they're starting off the piece with a wall of sound. Um, and whenever I say a wall of sound, there's a lot of noise. So, you've got five voices but all the they're all meshing together they're all singing and they're all singing at a pretty high volume and they're all they're all trying to the sound is it's like the sound wants to fill an entire room so let's see let's see where this goes because I, they've got some nice harmonies here so also listen to the uh background vocals that uh chants rob and Austin are doing while they're while the lead is going on with Tim. There was some dissonance there, in case anyone didn't notice. The dissonance is that wavy feeling, the crunchy feeling that you get whenever you're listening to two notes that are half a step apart. Also, that note that's in that particular chord doesn't belong within a triad of the chord. So there's a cool little musical contrast there. hear the waves that I'm talking about it's cool stuff the beatbox effect there I'm telling you Adam Rupp is insane Mary did you know that your baby boy also a cool little arranging piece with this um, as far as I know that most arrangements of this don't usually have like percussion or if they do it's very light so i don't know if they I, that's I, I take that statement back i really don't know for sure about the percussion and most of these arrangements for this song but i know that the the vocal percussion in christmas music or any percussion in christmas music for that matter needs to be tasteful it doesn't need to be overdone because It'll just take away from the meaning of the song. It'll take away from the feel of the song. It'll like So if you go out of your way to show off a lot in Christmas music, just like I was talking about in the Home Free Brothers in Arms video, you don't want to take away from the message or the delivery of the message. So <clears throat> good on Adam Rupp for staying disciplined in his um, vocal percussion. It's very pulled back, yet he's still showing off what he's able to do 
by doing what he's doing well. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy... And the, the lead part that Tim Faust is singing here is um, it's pulled back. It's light effort. He could do this in his sleep, honestly. Um, he's got a very light mechanism. It's it's not like he's trying to darken his voice, trying to have any weight, like intentional weight in his voice. He's just, he's almost speaking when he's singing this. So I'm not saying he's like doing it lazily. That's far from the truth, but he's, it's very controlled. It's very easy for him. And he's just, you know, he's just, it's almost like he's speaking, but in a singing, for, <coughs> in a singing format, excuse me, I'm still coming over the, or, I can't talk. Tradition. I'm still getting over that head cold, so forgive me. But light mechanism to leads or Tim's lead here. It's still got a little. It's still. I can't talk. <sighs> Tim's still got purpose in what he's saying and singing, but it's not. It's very light mechanism, very light effort. So. Would save our sons and daughters. Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you deliver. Chance is doing the bass line in the back while Tim's carrying the lead. And for those of you that don't listen to Home Free on a regular basis, Home Free, whenever Tim, their bass singer, is doing a lead, Adam Chance will... I'm just trying to work. I'm trying to work on calling him just Chance to make it easier. But Chance would typically carry the bass whenever Tim is carrying the lead. So. We'll soon deliver you. Mary, did you know? I think I'm hearing a either a sir or I'm hearing a low note in the background. A one. Hang on. I'm hearing that note in the background, but I'm not sure if it's vocal. It could it could be a growl with the air EQ'd out of it. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I'm I'm definitely hearing an A1 in the background somewhere. It's super subtle. It's super subtle. I'll play it one more time and we'll move on. I'm not a hundred percent sure actually now that I think about it because I'm here I think I'm hearing something else that's lower than that in addition to the A1. But I'm almost positive I'm hearing an A1 pitch somewhere in the back. Mary, did you know that your and I've said this before, but Home Free's also really good with their musical contrast. Adam Rupp is doing a good doing a good job of exemplifying their discipline with musical contrast in the, in his beatboxing. So at the beginning he was just doing a hi-hat. So he'd go. Tuff, 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 tuff. So that, that sound, but then he adds in a kick and a snare in here. So for those of you that don't know, this kind of snare is a little bit different. So he's more, it's more of like a rim hit. So imagine that my hand here is the snare drum instead of hitting it directly with the stick He's making a sound like as if a real drummer had actually had this stick sitting over top of the snare drum and doing just a tap on the rim of the snare. That's the sound effect that he's creating. So he's added the the, the snare rim hit and then he's also added the kick drum. And it's a little bit of musical contrast. Not keeping it totally the same, but not going too wild with it either. Baby boy, give sight to It's, I can't replicate it at the moment, but he's doing that that rim hit. Instead of doing like an actual rim snare, uh, snare hit, he's doing more like a snare rim hit. And it's it's typically very fitting to do that whenever you're doing percussion in a song, especially if you have like a smaller, not smaller, like a quieter song or a slower, more peaceful song if you want to add percussion because typically the rim hits are a lot more... Um, 
they're lower in volume and more they're less in your face and deliver less punch than a typical snare head hit so As we're listening to this over again, make sure you pay close attention to the background parts in particular and don't try to hone in on the background parts only and pay less attention to the lead part just so that we can get an idea of the structure and the the bass that is the baseline that is created for the lead to be carried on. There's harmonies all over the place. You've got notes that don't belong within the triad of the chord. You've got se you've got seconds, you've got thirds, you got perfect fourths, you got stuff like that all over the place. So. Another cool arranging piece is that when they have the some of the background parts are offset from the lead part that Tim is doing. So what I mean by offset when they're singing is that some of the words that Tim says. It'll be it'll be like echoed by the background parts, but they're still singing their background part, but it's just offset. They're not doing it at the exact same time as the lead every single time. I just hit the mic. I'm sorry. So I'll show you. I'll, I'll point it out and we'll move. Oh, baby boy, Did you know? Then Mary, did you know? If you were if you were listening for that, there was another one of those offset uh, backgrounds. Oh, Mary, did you, Mary, did you, Mary. They're echoing each other. And at abrupt beatboxing, he's added a few more small little trinkets in here for you to listen for. So, um. And the other section for a little bit, he just did the snare, the snare rim. He did the kick drum and he did the hi hat. And then now he's got like two or three extra little things put in here. Musical contrast, not totally the same. It's nice. Oh, Mary, There's that effect that I was telling you I was going to reference in this section that uh, Adam Rupp is doing. It's it's almost like a trill a little bit, but it's it's different and I can't I can't replicate it perfectly, but it's a really cool effect. Like I said, musical contrast, no sections exactly the same. Especially and I, I say a lot with the beatboxing, but I'm not giving a lot of credit to the the rest of the singers in the group too. They're also doing a good job of keeping things um fresh and and tastefully fresh, I can also say. So Okay, so Adam Rupp is doing a snare head hit in some of these now. So that's another little contrast. Um, back to the singers for a second. So they're starting to have a little more intensity well they started to have a little more intensity i'd say probably about a minute or two ago in the song but it's good because it builds it builds in intensity a little bit and it builds in volume a little bit but it doesn't go anywhere too crazy another musical contrast piece and they are all singing at this point it's still light mechanism everything that they're doing is well within their range and there's no issues regarding like struggling to do anything like it's all very easy for all of them and they're not having to focus so much on their technique and singing stuff the right way per se they're just they're feeling the music they're listening to the music and they're able to divert a little bit of the energy that they normally put into like working their skills in like a song arrangement like for instance you could have tim really focusing on getting a nice low note or good str string of low notes or you could have Tim 
I mean, excuse me, Austin Brown doing some seriously high belts and focusing on making sure those belts sound nice. But with a light mechanism and light effort, you can really f- hone in on enjoying the music, enjoying your, enjoying the fact that you're recording the music, and and you can just get more enjoyment out of it in general if you're using a little bit less effort. And it's not to say that there are any that they're trying to be lazy about it, and that's far from the truth. They are just as good in this and in, as any other Christmas song they've done or any other song in general. It's just they're able to do a song like this with less effort because it's a well-known song. It's a w- song they know the words to, and it's a relatively uncomplicated arrangement. So, of course, you've got all the somewhat complicated harmonies in the background, but other than that, there's really nothing too complicated, so they can really be free with it. Will speak the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know? Oh, oh, oh. I think I'm hearing uh, some DJ effects from uh, Adam Rupp there, and he's uh. Like he's among the best beatboxers in the world. He's crazy good, crazy crazy good, and yet more musical contrast. Nothing's ever exactly the same. For those that don't know, I harp on this in a lot of videos that I do. Musical contrast is something that artists, arrangers, and performers have to deal with. Is that in their performances and arrangements, they need to make sure that no single part of the song is inherently the same and keeps it tastefully different if you you're i'm going to coin that term and say tastefully different and you have to really find that balance for it to be tasteful because you can change a song too much or you can not change it enough so there's really a fine balance you have to walk in order to keep your audience listening to your music so with that said we're going to move on And right here, I believe, is the most intense part of the piece. And it and it all kind of swelled to this point. So it swelled in volume and intensity. I mean, it kind of did start off a little loud, but then, you know, it came back down. And then it's moving back up in intensity and volume. So this piece is moving like a, like a wave in an ocean. I draw that conclusion, or I draw that parallel quite a bit, but it's typically a very good one to follow. So... And the power of silence, too, and some of these arrangements and performances, guys. So even even the smallest bits of silence add, not only they add musical contrast, but they also, they add moments to where the crowd is anticipating the next move. And whenever you've got the crowd on the edge of their seat by anticipating the next move, that's a cool little piece. And that's a cool little life hack for arrangers, artists, and performers to really hone in on the their audience and the the attention that they're giving the performers so that sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. did you notice that pause there like the rest are, so it, it's really cool that they add those in there and it's tasteful too it's not like a crazy long one and it's not like so short you don't notice it so they also did a really cool little chord, um, like a, a chord that doesn't beling, belong within the key per se, I don't think. And then they go back to the key they were the singing in, I think. Music scholars, correct me if I'm wrong. Also, before we move on, I just have to make the statement that Tim Faust is like catch you off guard good at riffing and it's not that often that you know that you find a bass singer that can riff that well so kudos to him 
uh, pa- pausing just for a second, but I'm showing you this section that we're getting ready to go into is what I was referring to with the bit of silence. Also, that excuse me, I can't talk. It's going to be the silence piece that I was telling you about, and it's also going to be that part where they switch to a different chord that doesn't belong within the key. Oh. It's like they go up a half step for this chord and then they come back down a half step as far as the notes within the chord. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what it sounds like is happening. Uh, I think that was a B4 for Austin there. Really, really. Sorry if I'm like shoot shouting up into the sky, but I'm trying to avoid like belting really high because if I have to hit a, a B4, then I have kind of have to belt it a little bit. So I'm like, that's why I'm aiming up. So that way I'm not doing it directly into the microphone. So, but the B4 is a, is a really solid um, tenor note. So let me untranspose. That note is a B4, so uh, this is not the highest that Austin has ever sung, but it was it's a very clean and very good vocal fold closure esque B4. So, Mary. oh yeah, there was the <laughs> there was the cool sub effect. So Tim did this with a growl effect. So let's see what note he started at to slot do this slide down. G1 slide, maybe? Is the great I am. No, Tim's doing an E1 growl in the back. I had to listen closely for that, but Tim was doing an E1 growl in that, so. Uh, transpose back to here. And he was doing this note right here in a growl in the background here. It's hard to notice. That's crazy low. And then just listen. If you have good headphones, you can hear the bass waving in the in the in them. But it's I can't talk. If you've got good headphones, you can hear the bass uh, waving in the background. It's not super obvious, but it is there. And then I think he starts at the E one, and then he slides down. Mary, did you? No, he he goes up to a G one growl, and then growls down past an E one. Let's see where he stops. Mary, did you? I think he stopped right around a D or D flat C sharp one. Did you? Good example of what I was talking about earlier with the echoing in the background parts. Just kind of listen to that. They're trading them off, and it's a really cool little effect that tons and tons and tons of singers do with background vocals. It's super popular, and it, it gives a good effect. Super easy to do. So it's, it's a good little addition to add it into oh, this. As long as it's not done throughout the entire song. So like, it's, as long as it's not overdone, then it's a good piece to make. Mary. Tim did another growl slide here. I think he started off like at an E1. That one was much more subtle than the other one. Uh, I think it was started off at like you know what I think it started off at a G like the set last one did but it was much more subtle. Some it went something like that but in a slide so there was no break in pitch it just went you know. Mary, did you know? It's such a good piece, man. It's such a good arrangement, such a good performance. 
And it's a good Christmas song to cover too. So I'm going to try to imitate this, um, this slide that they did to show you to like, to truly give you an idea how low this is. And then we'll wrap this video up. So the note he did there is with well, a growl was was an E one sub like I was pointing out earlier. And then he's doing the G one down to E down past the E one slide. Mary, did you one more time and then we'll wrap this up. That is super cool, guys. And it's not, it's not, it's tasteful too. I mean, it's really cool. It's a really nice way to show off a low note, but you're not like, Ooh! you know, like you're not smashing your viewers and your audience with it. It's really cool. The background parts here it's really cool little nice light airy tone to fill out the sound Mary did you know guys this was so much fun to listen to and react to it's harmonic soup I coined that term in every single uh every single reaction anymore because we all know how talented these arrangers and performers are in the music that I cover. So yeah, that concludes my uh, reaction and musical analysis of Mary, did you know the home freeze cover of this? So if you like the content and you're new to the channel, I appreciate it. If you would drop me one of these, give me a like, Drop some comments, and if you have not yet subscribed and you're watching my videos, we would love to have you. We've got some super exciting content in the future, so be on the lookout for podcasts that are that will be coming up. And I've got some exciting leads that I cannot share with you at the moment, but believe me, these are insane. These are going to be insane if they get to happen. So, with that said, this is Drew from the Vocast. I'm signing off. I love you guys. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you guys later. Love you guys.